Stephanie with Cauliflower Foods. Welcome back to What's Cooking in Our Kitchen. Today we have an amazing guest with us here in Nashville. It is Maddie Jackson. Woo! Oh my gosh, we're so excited to have you here with us today. Thank you all for having me. I'm just down the road, so it's yeah, no well, trouble. Well, Maddie, you are, I mean, an incredible chef. She is the owner of Salt and Vine, which is one of the best restaurants, in my opinion, in Nashville. I ate Mine there last too. time yeah. I was here. It was yeah. so, so yummy. Uh, and you're also Alan Jackson's daughter, which is super cool. But we'll not be singing this morning. Yeah. No, <laughs> just cooking. No, just, just cooking. cooking. Well, you know what? What you're cooking here is something that we have never even like thought of making with our crust. Right. I'm so excited yeah. that we're making this. Yeah. You I think you're going to be having our souls singing, basically, <laughs> because right. this is speaking that's to me in a way that's going to just rock my world. That's what food really does, right? Right. It's Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so Salt and Vine, we, um, we focus on global cuisine, seasonal global. Um, so we have a limited menu, but we represent a lot of uh, Mediterranean style mm -hmm. food, uh, Middle Eastern style food, and uh, Asian. So those are kind of our, don't get me wrong, we have sliders on the menu specifically for dad, the only thing he'll <laughs> eat. Um, but yeah, we want to really integrate freshness, um, veggies, we use a lot of herbs and spices That's rather great. than creams and fats. And let's not, let's be honest, it's a wine bar, so we do have cheese. Um, but we love the idea of taking the cauliflower crust and doing something outside the traditional pizza box. So mm, I've worked closely that. with our chef um, to come up with a fun little play on a fried rice. Who doesn't love fried rice? Yeah, Sitting exactly. at the hibachi counter, you can bring the hibachi to you and cut the calories. Oh my gosh. By a tremendous yeah, amount. Yeah, because I'm looking here, I'm not seeing a crust. So. Yeah, so what we've done with the crust, we use the uh, sweet red pepper, uh, because I feel like the original maybe is a little easier to do in a, a traditional Italian place. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, um, what do we put in a traditional stir fry? Typically bell peppers. So we have an orange bell pepper we're integrating, but we decided to go with this crust. And in order to get the consistency right, super easy, we've kind of prepped this in advance, but pull your crust right out of the freezer. Um, with them still frozen, we used uh, two crusts for this recipe to give us a little larger batch. If you want to just use one, um, just cut these quantities in half. But for today, we have two of the red pepper crusts, and you pull them out, just break them into pieces, throw them in your food processor, pulse it until it gets to this um, sort of crumbled rice consistency, not till it's like sawdust, but okay. there's a little texture left. Right. And we're basically going to move forward as if this is rice. That's so cool. I, I, you, I mean, this is just so fun because trying to come up with different recipes, like how to use the crust differently. This is just right. by far the coolest right. one so well, far. People always try to cut out, I mean, when, yeah. when they're trying to cut out carbs, yeah. they miss things like pizza, but they also really miss rice. Right, right. exactly. It's genius. Exactly. And so what we're going to do today is some of um, the basic ingredients we like in our stir fry. You can, of course, put anything you want in it, whatever your flavor is, whatever your veggie choices are. Yeah. Um, so cool. I throw yeah. maybe some peas in there for me. Yeah, peas. I like <laughs> right. You can use I think peas, that's some amazing. Water crust, something for crunch. Oh, okay. Um, but these are items that we use frequently in our kitchen. Yeah. So that's what we want. All right. All right. Let's yeah. Let's see. Yay. Okay. Work your magic. All right. All right. So let's see here. Oh, we're going. Yeah, we're going. We're going. There we go. Yeah. Heat. So we're going to start about a medium high heat. Okay. Um, olive oil. We're just going to drizzle enough in the pan to saute. You're gonna start with about a tablespoon. Okay. Okay. So let that get a little warm. Yeah, we were running through this recipe and I like kept picturing my childhood um, hibachi place that our family would like always go. Shogun, you know, they're all called different things and they like, pop the shrimp in your mouth. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. I was like, we should do that, but someone will get injured. So yeah. I'm gonna um, <laughs> forego that little uh, charade today. I think they have to go to special school for that. Yeah, um, yeah, my knife skills are not to that level by any stretch. Mine definitely not either. So for most of these, um, for the double batch, the two crust batch, we're gonna do about half a cup of all the veggies here. Okay. Okay. Again, just cut that down to a quarter cup if you're gonna do one crust. So we'll start with white onions. Just a nice little dice. Oh, I love That's the, the sound we love. And onions. So have you always loved like cooking? Has this been like a passion? Or? I have. I always, um, you know, my family is from South Georgia, both my mother and father's family. So we grew up Southern food around the table. You know, he was at his mom's every Sunday. Um, so a very different style of cuisine, but I always love to do that with my mom, you know, like help her roll out the biscuits. Right do all that. So um, when I went to college, I studied abroad in Greece for a summer, Oh, wow. which is incredible. Obviously, you know, all of the Greek life revolves around food, late dinners, late lunches. They don't start work till 10 so they can have brunch, you know, that sort yeah. of thing. And um, that's awesome. So I kind of fell in love again with that Mediterranean cuisine, which is lighter oils versus butter, herbs, um, 
spices and um, studied around and then went to Tuscany, went through Italy oh, with some girlfriends afterward. Obviously fell in love with wine. Yeah. <laughs> How do you not? So my background for the restaurant actually is from a love of food, but my training is in wine. So I moved to Austin after school, huge food and wine scene, mm -hmm. and uh, did my sommelier there. So I do all the wine and beverage program for Salt and Vine. Wow. Um, that's why we're a wine focus. That's why we have a wine shop next door. Um, so I kind of started as an amateur cook, and then in the sequence of the last year and a half, working closely with our executive chef, have picked up tips and gotten a little better you at it. You probably know how the food then will pair with, you know, like, the wine yeah. you have in mind, you're like, oh my gosh. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I love, I'm yeah. such a huge sparkling fan. I love sparkling with anything Asian because it uh, kind of cuts through any of the salt that's there. Uh -huh. And well, that's uh, good to know. Yeah, exactly. Because that's always been something really hard for me, like when you're eating out, trying to get the right sure, you know, sure. compliment. The biggest thing, and we don't have tons of spice in here today, obviously, if you wanted to integrate some serranos or anything to bring it um, a little heat, always go for either a slightly fruity, slightly sweet wine um, or a sparkling. Because if you get a red, like a big old Cabernet, super dry, those tannins are going to fight with the spice and it's just going to be like fire and dynamite. So, unless you like that, really good yeah, no, it's true. you learn on what's cooking it's with true, It's true. So, we're going to get these onions just until they're about translucent. Okay. Perfect. And then we'll throw in some garlic, about a teaspoon here, a teaspoon oh, and a half if you're like me, which everything needs tons of garlic. Oh gosh. Yeah, I knew I liked you. <laughs> it smells amazing. If you can have anything like bring flavor into your kitchen, I think onion and garlic oh. is like my favorite. Oh, that's all you need, right? And shallots, I've like oh, I love completely shallots. been turned on. Yeah. Uh, shallots and leeks. I'm like a leek oh. freak right now. It's the silliest thing. Yeah. But it's just like they look so gorgeous. They cook quicker, um, and they just and the flavor. They infuse yeah. the flavor without mm -hmm. having to do all the chopping and crying. It gets stuck under my glasses, all the fumes, and then it's just a disaster. But um, problems in the kitchen. Awesome. So we'll get that going, nice. and then we will toss about another teaspoon of our olive oil right. to okay. keep it well in it. Damp, yeah, that's right. And then we will go with our chopped carrots. Now, does your restaurant like have a garden, like a local garden, or I mean, because I think like like a lot of what you're talking about is, you know, kind of bringing, you know, basically like farm to table type, right, you know, right, ingredients. We we do we do not have a garden. We're on a kind of an industrial street in West Nashville, but um, we work a lot. We work some with Bloomsbury Farms. Um, Several local growers. We do all local beef, Porter Road Butcher. Um, they're fantastic. And uh, so, yeah, we try to integrate that as much as possible. Um, and then for cheese meat, stuff like that, we work with a local cheese company and then um, sort of an importer from Atlanta. So it's not all local, but yeah. it's, it's as close it's as still, we can. It's I'm that not. southern feeling, you know, like, yeah. oh my gosh, so like, exactly. y'all come on in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Incorporating everyone. I love it. And that's a big thing that we want to stress, especially as someone with eclectic cuisine that maybe hasn't always been present till recently in Nashville um, and with a wine focus because let's face it wine can be kind of scary and seem pretentious to people and that is exactly the opposite of what we want to do at Salt and Vine. We want that southern come on everybody you're welcome feel Absolutely. without you know losing the elevated style of cooking and the most interesting wine selection we can keep but value and approachability are huge for us. I love that. Yeah. And you've only been open for, you said a year and a half? Year and a half, yeah. Wonderful. So we're coming on two years in July, and the neighborhood has been so supportive, and it's been so fun to watch it change. Congratulations. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Oh, yum. The colors are gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, we love all the bright colors. Yeah. We're, our accent color is bright yellow, so we love the oranges. Oh, how fun. The yellows. Yeah. 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 So we're going to let that simmer down. Um, you can season with a little salt and pepper. Try not to do too much because we are going to use some soy sauce. Okay. Do you use like kosher salt or I mean, because sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Just cooking. a kosher salt. You can use um, like a pink Himalayan sea salt mm -hmm. is what our chef loves if you want to really take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll just let these guys get tender. Oh, that's so good. When you were a little girl, did you imagine you'd be growing up? To own a restaurant and be a chef, is that? Oh gosh, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> Nor did I when I started this project. Actually, I was thinking, oh, cute little wine bar. And then I started meeting with our culinary director at the time who helped us open and our sous chef, who's now our exec chef. 
and they just had such a breadth of experience from Moroccan to our exec chef's families from Syria, so she hand makes all our oh. flatbread and our pita mm. from Grandma's recipe, yeah. and so I was like, yeah, I love food too much to make it just a tapas <laughs> place. I was like, we need a full menu, How lunch fun. and dinner, and let's be real, if you're drinking wine, you need a little bit more substantial food. I love that. All right. So these guys are all tender now, okay. so we're going to add um, about six to eight tablespoons of soy sauce just to give it that Asian flavor. Again, you're right about three or four if you're using one crust. Perfect. And then with that, we'll go ahead and add our crust. So you got a little bit of a simmer there, but it doesn't need to be too hot because you want to integrate it slowly. What a fun texture. I'm just blown away. Yes, and again, be sure to put it in that processor when it's frozen, because otherwise it will kind of mush up. Oh, but, good to know. And then so the, I, was, I was wondering if you had like, you know, pre-baked it, you know, kind of, and toasted no. it. No, so no, you don't no, have to even no do oven that. needed. Pull it out frozen, oh. um, blitz it until you've got this rice-like texture, yeah. and then just leave it out. It doesn't take long um, to let it thaw before you put it in the pan. You just don't want any of those um, frozen waters to come out and dilute it. Sure. No, I'm looking at this. I mean, it's something you could probably do, like, you know, middle of the week, you know, you pull your crust out, you've, you know, worked all day, but like, oh, you got a couple veggies, throw oh, those absolutely. in there. I mean, this is not. This is a catch-all hodgepodge absolutely. whatever you have. That's my favorite kind of cooking. Oh, my gosh, and probably leftovers is probably End of the week. awesome, too. Like, oh, if, if there are leftovers, right? you know. Right. Right. I mean, I think just seeing that, you, you say there's two crusts, but I think I could probably, you know, motor through that entire thing uh, myself. Well, <laughs> so, and you could, though, without feeling... Yeah. No, no, no. And the great part is like grill up your favorite protein and just chop that up and throw that oh, on there yeah. too. So oh my gosh. That goes. So fantastic. Hit it with a touch more. I love pepper. Oh, I do I too. I could not get enough. I do too. I had a grandpa that peppered everything. Everything. And we had Sunday suppers at their house mm. doing the same thing. So kind of bringing it all together. Oh gosh, he would love this. The peppers, the onions, the black pepper. Okay. It's like a harmony. In Food it. brings it people together. It does. It does. It really does. I love it. It's my favorite time of day. My kids and my husband and I, we all get to have like the only time together sometimes right. is around the dinner table. Yeah. And yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Oh my gosh. All right. So for our final step, if you like the kind of pseudo hibachi egg situation, which I love, um, this is the way to do it at home that will kind of emulate what you get at those uh, hibachi style restaurants. So we're still about, we're bringing it closer to medium now. Um, and all you want to do is basically hollow out a little, kind of a little nest. A little nest. Yeah. How cute. You can put the little so we're sizzling. In so what you'll do is we're going to crack two eggs over here. Right in the middle, just like a bird's nest, yep, and then you just want to scramble it in consistently with all the rest and it will slowly cook, break up, give that nice little savory umami protein situation. Oh my gosh, yum. I think you might be a genius. <laughs> just, just saying. Totally. <laughs> you know, when, when Amy, our fearless founder, when she created this company, I bet you she didn't know that you could do that with her cauliflower <laughs> pizza crust. No. I can't wait for her to see this. No. Well, I my favorite game always is what do I have in the pantry and what can I make without right. having to go to the store, especially right. at the right. end of the week, right? Yes. Hey, so this is certainly one of those options. Oh my gosh. Well, I just made lasagna with their uh, Cali Italian uh, crust. And I mean, I was just pulling stuff out of the refrigerator. They're like, well, what's the recipe? I'm like, well, I don't know. Well, I did, you know, <laughs> I did a little of this. It's not you know, it's quite quite recorded. recorded. Yeah. <laughs> you get really creative that way. And you, you know, use it in ways you didn't think you were going to use it because you didn't know that's what was in the fridge, right? So it's fantastic. All right. So see, you've got slightly softer than a rice would be, but it's it's almost going to oh, yeah. kind of yeah. translate over into a sort of cross between a fried rice and a quinoa situation. Yeah, nice. Which we all love. Right. Oh, that's good for so you. So see, there's your egg all integrated. Then you just uh, taste for salt and pepper for final seasoning. Mm. I think we're going to be a okay. Yay! So, that off. Put that plate. Yes. Oh, that's just beautiful. Beautiful. And then, obviously, for color, 
We love the leeks. We love the scallions. We love anything with a oh. little bit of a greenness no, and a little bit of an extra seasoning. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, there we are. Oh, my gosh. You get the award for oh the most gosh. creative. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Let's bring it over here so everyone can check that out. Because holy cow. Savory, filling, no carbs, yeah. healthy. And it's beautiful. All right. Beautiful. It all looks right. amazing. Are we going in? Yeah, we got to go in. Yeah, I'll go in. Go in. Oh, my gosh. There we go. There we go. Okay. I guess I was really. Piping hot. Yeah. Let's see. Don't burn yourself. Oh, my gosh. See, if you serve that, no one would know that that's a pizza mm. crust. Mm -mm. Oh my gosh, that's absolutely what? divine. Oh my right? god, it's so good. It works. It works. Oh, oh my, god. my gosh, it works. I mean, better Girl. than works. I mean, that is going to be like a, a staple at Isn't my that beautiful? house. Mm. And those flavors will just intensify and sort of mm. saturate if you do have any leftovers. Oh my god, it's so um, good. Just hang <laughs> on to it. <laughs> there were no leftovers. <laughs> Not today. So Not amazing. Today. Oh my gosh. It has been such a blessing and such a pleasure to have you oh, here gosh, in our kitchen. Y and no. we can't wait for, you know, us having for us to have the opportunity to come to your restaurant, your you know wine bar again, and enjoy more delectable items like this. And I mean, everyone at home, get into Nashville, go over and see Maddie, see the crew there that is coming up with amazing, amazing, amazing food. food. So oh. good, so happy to you're you're in our kitchen. Exactly. I know. Well, we're glad you're back in Nashville. Oh gosh. Well, we're gonna have to come back again. That's right. Just our, to yeah. come see more deliciousness. That's all right. Online, so. Awesome. You guys, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you haven't already, we have new recipes coming out once a week. Also, go to CaliFlowerFoods.com to get the full recipe on our website. Yeah. There we go. Thank Man. you, Maddie. Thank you, Austin. Oh, y'all. That's awesome. right. All right. Till next time. We'll Bye. see you.